MrsSperry.com presents How to Use a Template to Easily Write an MLA 8th Edition Research Paper. Get the template from MrsSperry.com, free and available to all, not just my students. You will find the link to the template, a fill-in-the-blank research paper, on the MLA Research Papers page. After clicking on the MLA Research Papers link, you will see links to the MLA Research Paper template for Google Docs users and for Microsoft Word users. Click on the appropriate choice. Google Docs users need to sign into their account and click on File and make a copy. Then they should name their copy something like Sam's copy of MLA 8th edition. After giving the document a name, select OK. Your copy will be saved to your Google Drive folder. Highlight your last name. Type in your last name over the highlighted text. Do not hit delete before typing. Do not highlight or type over the number 1. Users of Microsoft Word should select the template for Microsoft Word users. After selecting the template for Microsoft Word users, click on Enable Editing. Once you have the document open, then you just highlight the information within brackets and once you highlight it, you type in what's true for yourself. So let's say Sam's last name is Smith. Over your last name and the brackets, he types in Smith. Continue your paper by highlighting the bracketed information and typing in what's true about yourself. So Sam Smith Teacher name, Mrs. Sperry, or for a college professor, Professor Sperry. Name of class, English 11. If your teacher wants, you could put in the block or period, or the in college, the course number. The date, you notice, comes in day, month, and year. So I'll put in 8 June 2017. Now let's look at how to create a title. We have two choices. We could be discussing a long work, in which case we need to use italics, or we could be discussing a short work, in which case we need to use quotes. Since I'm going to be talking about, in this example, a long work called The Crucible, I'll highlight Lord of the Flies and change it to The Crucible. Now I have to decide what I'm going to be writing about. In this case, I've been assigned a topic by my teacher. I look at my assigned question. The question is, in Arthur Miller's play, who were the three characters most responsible for the deaths in Salem, and what important truths about life do those characters reveal to readers? So I've read The Crucible, I create my answer, and I've decided that I have the most evidence to prove that these three characters are most responsible for the deaths in Salem. Now I have to look at what important truths about life do those characters reveal, and I found evidence that shows that Abigail teaches readers that jealousy can lead to disaster, Mary shows that weak people can become accomplices to murder, and Whoops, I made a correction there I need to undo. And Judge Danforth shows that people who have blind faith can, have, can destroy many lives. I decide what I'm going to put for what I'm studying. And I am studying the characters most responsible for the deaths in Salem and now I can get rid of the extra stuff that I'm not using, so I can delete this and then delete the extra line space. Get rid of this and get rid of the short title choice because I'm not writing about that. And get rid of the extra line spaces. So now I have my heading and I have my title, The Crucible. A study of the characters most responsible for the deaths in Salem. Whoops, I left in a letter here. I need to get rid of that. Mm 
Next, I see the information that says this template is designed to help you quickly organize and format research papers according to the requirements stated in the MLA Handbook 8th edition. And I see that it's giving me instructions, so I'm going to read that. When I finish reading the instructions, I'm then going to delete them. I'm ready to begin my introductory paragraph. And the template tells me to write a question about what the author or the poet of the work I am analyzing is teaching readers about human behavior. So now I go back to my notes page to look at and decide on a question. I see the flaw in each of the three characters that I have chosen to discuss and think about what happens as a result of those flaws. Then I create a question to copy and paste into the research paper template. My question about life is, can jealousy, a weak personality, and blind faith lead to tragedy? I highlight the information in the template that I want to replace with my own question, and then I paste in my question. And I'm left with, can jealousy, a weak personality, and blind faith lead to tragedy? Then I put in a space, and I see that next, I should answer the question in a very general way by writing the first and last name of the author who wrote the literary work, plus an apostrophe, then the name of the literary work that I'm analyzing. For example, William Golding's Lord of the Flies provides answer to this question. So I highlight to the end of the bracket, and that's where I will copy and paste my answer by going back to my notes page. By going to my notes page, I found out who, my, who wrote my play, Arthur Miller, and I created, by following the template, his la the author's name, I'll paste that in there, the author's name with an apostrophe, then the S, and then the crucible is the name of the work. Now I just need to put a space here, and I have the first two sentences, whoops, space, and I have the first two sentences of my research paper. Can jealousy, a weak personality, and blind faith lead to tragedy? Arthur Miller's The Crucible provides answers to this question. I continue to follow the instructions in the template. I look at my notes, find the theme of the work I am analyzing, and paste it in. I keep the words by analyzing, which are not in brackets, and then I paste in the information about my own work to replace the information in the brackets. Now I get, by analyzing the crucible's characterizations, and I get a sentence then that will be the last sentence of my first paragraph, and I check the information here to make sure that my last sentence is a good thesis statement. The last sentence of your introductory paragraph is your thesis statement. It controls every word you write in the paper and provides the order in which you will make your points. I said that I would be discussing the characterization of Abigail William first, then Mary Warren, and then Judge Danforth. So now I can delete this bracket information because I've checked my thesis statement and it meets the requirements. Then I see that after I read the bolded examples of the samples, the bolded examples of two other introductory paragraphs, I can delete them. So they're just another check to make sure you understand the directions for how to create an introductory paragraph. So I'm going to highlight the bolded examples, and you can pause the video to read them if you want. I'm going to highlight them and delete them. After deleting any extra line spaces or anything else that showed up in my copy and paste, I now see that I am ready to begin the first body paragraph. So I wrote that I was going to first write about Abigail Williams, and so I see that this first body paragraph must be about Abigail Williams, the first item that I said I would discuss. Then I am to begin my paragraph with a transition word and a reminder of the work's theme by completing the sentence after the bracket. So I've read that information, I can delete that information, 
and I see that my first uh, word in my first body paragraph is going to be the word first. So I'm keeping all of these words which are not in brackets. So I'm going to say first when analyzing a literary work it is important to look at. Now the directions say to put in my first point. For example, genre. Well my first point is about characterization so I'm going to highlight the bracketed information and type in characterization. Next, I need to write how the first element I am discussing helps the author develop his or her theme. I copy and paste in Abigail is an important character who demonstrates the fact that jealousy is a human weakness that can motivate a person to hurt others. Now I put in evidence from the crucible and other sources. Notice that when evidence is given from an author of a print book, the page number follows the author's last name. If the source is a web page, no page number is given. If the author's names are given in the sentence, they do not have to be restated in parentheses. After evidence from several sources is given to support the point that Abigail Williams is a jealous character responsible for the deaths in Salem, a concluding sentence is written. Clearly, Abigail Williams is a character responsible for the deaths in the crucible and her actions develop the theme that a human weakness like jealousy can destroy others. It is important to note that a concluding sentence of a paragraph is a mirror to the first sentence of the paragraph or the first couple of sentences of the paragraph. So you should always look at the first couple of sentences of a paragraph in order to determine how to write the last sentence of the paragraph. After writing the first body paragraph, you should have noticed that you must have good notes to create a research paper. If you copy and paste notes, put them in quotation marks and put the author's last names in parentheses. Notice that here the author is Foreman and here the author is Staffaroni. Also notice that when you copy and paste, you may end up with font types and sizes that do not match what you're going to put into your paper. Also note that you won't use every quote. Sometimes you'll change the quote into just a regular sentence where you've put the information in your own words and then you still give credit to the author for the idea, but you can remove the quotes then because the words are your words for the author's ideas. When I copied and pasted my notes, I also copied and pasted publication information needed for the last page of the paper, the Works Cited page. Here you see author's last names in parentheses for two notes that I took. Let's look at the highlighted example from two writers at Cliff's Notes. The Cliff's Notes web page, How to Cite the Literature Note for the Crucible, gives us the, this example. So I highlighted it and copied and pasted it into my notes. But it was then that I noticed that it didn't look right. It didn't look like the example in Mrs. Sperry's template. If you look at the highlighted examples, with the top one being the one that Cliff's Notes suggested and the bottom one being the one that Mrs. Sperry's template suggested, you will see that they are very different. The Modern Language Association says that angle brackets are not used any longer. So clearly the Cliff's Notes um, suggestion is based on an older edition of the MLA handbook than the 8th edition. That's why you need to be very careful. 
Mrs. Sperry's template is updated with MLA 8th edition information. The information at the Purdue Online Writing Lab website is also updated, and you can find a link to it in the template. Let's get back to the template. More information is given about what is what in addition to author's last names can go in parentheses for unusual sources, and sample first body paragraphs are given. After reading the information, you can delete it, or you can save it for later and delete it only when you've finished writing the entire paper. I'm going to delete it now so we can see how to begin the second body paragraph. To complete my second body paragraph, I read the instructions and the example second body paragraph in the template and substitute information about the work I am analyzing. To complete my third body paragraph, I read the instructions and the example third body paragraph and substitute information about the work I am analyzing. Please notice that the example of a third body paragraph shows how to format a long quote. Also be aware that to shorten this video, I am pasting in whole paragraphs instead of typing in or pasting one sentence or part of one sentence at a time, as you will need to do. Since our thesis statement said we would be making three points, we are now ready to write our concluding paragraph. If our assignment and our thesis statement said we would be discussing more points, we would put in additional body paragraphs. Please note that some teachers like students to begin their concluding paragraph by signaling that the paper is nearing the end, while other teachers do not. To complete your Works Cited page, read the instructions in the template and then type in or copy and paste in publication information for your sources under the appropriate given example. In my notes, I find an example written by SparkNotes editors, and I find a similar example in the template. So I'm going to hit Enter here and copy and paste what I wrote whoops, to see if it matches. So I look, SparkNotes Editors, the title of the work, SparkNotes is the web name of the website. I took out the HTTP because I, that's what I'm supposed to do for ML 8th edition. So the internet address looks good. Uh-oh, since there's no date, given by the website, I have to put the date I accessed it, so I have to put in after my source accessed and put today's date 2017. Now it turned it blue and I don't want it to so I just click on that and then I click on remove so it will be black. Now ask your teacher, because your teacher might want to have the link working so that he or she can quickly check and make sure that, yes, you did use that source. The information that you put in your paper came from that page, and they can easily see it. Then once you have checked your work, you delete the example, get rid of that, and then 
you continue to put in other your other sources that you used, making sure that your final works cited list is in alphabetical order according to the author's last name. And you check to make sure you have used the number of sources that your teacher asked you to use. If you have been following along and writing your own paper, congratulations! You have completed an MLA 8th edition research paper. You have your title, your introductory paragraph, your body paragraphs, your long quote. You have your work cited page in alphabetical order by the author's last name. You're done! If you want to learn more about writing MLA research papers, please visit Mrs. Sperry's MLA paper FAQs table. There you will see a table that has all the information you need to answer any questions about research papers and to find publication information from books and other sources. For example, if you're not familiar with where the information about the author's name and the title and the year of publication can be found in a book that's given for you on the MLA paper FAQs table page. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Bye!